Welcome back everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful afternoon. We are with Daryl and my name is Steve, joined by Senzo on camera. Please feel free to send your questions, hashtags fire live or throw them in on the YouTube chat stream. I'm seeing something now with Daryl I've never ever seen before with an elephant. See if we can get it in on his trunk there. He is actually picking up the marula fruits and throwing them in his mouth like peanuts. See if you can see this in the go. He's not putting them in his mouth, he's throwing them in his mouth. Let me move up a couple inches. Now he's going to turn for us there. He's physically picking them up. Watch. Whoops. Throwing them in. That is the most incredible thing I think I've ever seen. Watch it. Three. <laughs> he is such a superstar. <laughs> now I've seen elephants do many things. I've never seen them feed on marulas like this. I've always seen them put them in their mouth. But to see him actually flicking them in is definitely something. And he was doing it from quite a distance earlier. Almost like he was trying to show off. Let's see if he's going to do another one. Oh, now he's going back to normal elephant feeding. Daryl is cool like that, Mrs. Lapwing. He is just that cool character, isn't he? And now what I want to bring to your attention as well is how soft his eye is. Now, everybody wants to understand elephant behavior. Most people, oh, now he's blocking with his ears. Most people think elephant's ears are everything in the behavior. But look at his eye, it's very soft. It's very soft. When the elephant's not happy or upset in any way, that eye is the first thing to change. And it'll go very, very wide. And then you'll actually see the whites around the brown of the eye. Um, and that is just a bit of mucus you can see in the eye there. But you can see how soft his eyes are. That is the typical, typical sort of posture of a very relaxed, very in control and comfortable elephant. I just thought I'd let you know that. And then obviously from a distance, it's much easier to see the tail. If the tail is all sorts all over the place, and then you can tell also if it's stiff, move it from side to side, and then you know that he's not very relaxed. But Daryl right now is loving his marula fruits. And well, another animal Tristan is with don't like marula fruits, but they love putting their food up the marula tree. Indeed, uh, she's as chilled as you're ever going to get. She is fast, 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 fast asleep up in the tree. And it's wonderful for us because she's on the right side of uh, the road. We are right up against Gari Main. Um, in fact, the kill was literally kind of, as, I suppose, not even a meter off the road. Um, and Tandi went deeper into Chitwa. And obviously, little Kalamba has come in to torture it and found herself a nice tree in which to go up in, which is absolutely wonderful. Now, of course, I must say hello to all of you. For those of you that are joining us after the school drive, it is a very warm welcome. It's a good start to our afternoon. Daryl and Kalamba on this side of the world is as good as it gets. And I'm with Sebastian this afternoon. And for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is... Tristan. Good. Now, before we carry on with anything else, I must say, because Dina Kay, it's your birthday, and you asked me very nicely if I would find Clalamba for you, because you would want that for your birthday. So, I hope that you have a happy birthday, and I'm glad that we managed to find the leopard that you were hoping to see, and she's going to hopefully put on a show for us this afternoon. I, I don't think she's going to do too much, because she's probably quite fat and full, given that she's eaten all this impala. But she, in all likelihood, um, is going to feel quite comfortable up there. And only much later, when it cools down, will we see her starting to kind of come down and moving back towards the impala carcass itself and have a bit more of a feed. It looked like a big impala ram that they managed to bring down. Um, and so who brought it down? I'm not sure. I would gather, I would imagine it must be Tandi, just given that... Um, you know the the size of it and the fact that both of them are here um would would indicate that it was was her but um i would you know it's it's you never really fully know um who it actually is but i would imagine that it would be um tandy that would have killed that impala anyway I did, the thing is with her is that she's obviously going to look around quite a bit and I think if Tandi moves towards the carcass itself you're going to find that she's going to get quite curious and will probably in all likelihood um, want to be able to go and kind of investigate and if there's that jealousy factor that happens often with leopards is if they see another one feeding then they go and try and kind of get some particularly with her she often seems to kind of challenge her mother over carcasses so ho hopefully later in the day she'll head there but for now it suits us absolutely perfectly as all the cars kind of go through the site 
setting for us we can stay on this side because we are kind of out of the way and everybody else can go to where the actual carcass is but i don't see her being in this tree all that long in fact her yawning like this is probably a good indication that she is going to potentially get out of this tree at some point soon michelle you say you can't help but love this little one yes she's absolutely beautiful and the way that she's kind of sitting now she looks like she's in her favorite little armchair and she's got her kind of hips on the side and then her one arm over and she almost looks as though she's kind of just resting back in a recline look at that so, i mean she's almost lying backwards what are you doing clalamba <laughs> you're a silly cat what are you doing that is ridiculous you've you've obviously been watching your older half brother who does stuff like this but i mean that is as relaxed as you could ever get that almost looks more human like than it does a leopard I mean, she's literally lying on her back at the moment with her one leg kind of splayed out look at that <laughs> exactly bagheera from the jungle book she's kind of just spread out and is as happy as anything could be how cool is that you can see a little pearly whites as well that are sticking out what are you doing you silly cat that can't be comfortable i think she's going to move though there's a few yawns that's going to happen so mrs lapwing the kill is on chitra it's back to like our back right of where we're sitting at the moment um so it's impossible for us to show you where it is it's quite far from where Clalamba is probably I would say about 150 100 meters from where we are inside right next to Kanagari main um, and there's cars that side so we're not moving at all we're just trying to kind of stay out of the way of all the cars with little Clalamba uh, but we'll show it later we will um, try and get a view of, of that later as well as Tandi um, I'm hoping that Tandi comes this side and drags the kill to the side because that would be absolutely perfect for us although I, I wouldn't be surprised that they lose this kill tonight unfortunately when it's big things like impala rams it really is too big for them to to be able to hoist and to be able to move around effectively and they end up kind of losing it a lot to hyenas so it's going to be interesting i mean it also depends on how much they've actually eaten it looks as though the back kind of section has been eaten but really still quite a lot of meat on there and i think far too heavy for even tandy to be able to pick up now let's see where she's going to go it looks like she's just kind of watching at the moment we're going to sit with her a little bit longer we are obviously well not a little bit longer we'll probably spend most of our afternoon here but um, in the meantime let's send you across to steve who's found something that does not have spots but has stripes stripes and spots is the order of the afternoon we do apologize for james he is playing with some gremlins up in the mara our technicians are working hard at trying to solve whatever problems are plaguing him up there. No doubt once he is back up and mobile, we'll be hearing from him. Well, there is definitely a boy. And if you've ever had difficulty IDing a zebra, today should not be the day. Um, don't ask me how I can tell. There's just something about him that just gives it all away. The stallion is often much bigger than the rest of the herd, much bigger in size. And <laughs> it is indeed the end of school drive. Uh, it is wild and it is nature. And uh, the, the stallion is often bigger in size and often has a posture where he'll stand between um, any threats and his herd. They are very defensive of their ladies, very defensive, will even give their life for their ladies, which is quite something to do, isn't it? And uh, oh, she's got a very lovely scar on her bottom. Look at that. Ooh, that looks like she's missed a lion attack. Look, there's one on the right and one on the left. Wow, madam, you are very lucky. Just a bit of a scratch and a bit of bleeding. No doubt she has gotten off very lightly. If the lions happened to catch on to her, it'd be very, very well she would have been eaten. Those claws of lions, those protractile claws, when they sink themselves in, it is, there's almost no escaping. And no doubt she must have laid in a hoof or two into the head of the animal that was trying to grab her down. And well, she has survived to live another day. But I'm sure she'll be quite happy with the wound that she's got some scars to show her friends. Look at how well I've done. Kimberly, that does look quite painful and no doubt the flies are constantly on there and that's why at least it's in a spot where the tail is making good work of keeping them away. 
Not around her head though. Oh, the ox peckers are really, really annoying her. But they are moving very slowly across the open clearing here of quarantine. No doubt they are headed down to the watering hole where Daryl was just now to go and have a drink. And they're not alone. They've also got a herd of wildebeest there that are following closely behind. And there are still two little youngsters in the herd. There is one. And the second one is coming in on the left at some point. Very nice to see our herds together. And what we are actually in the process of doing is Sydney left Tingana just here on the western side of quarantine. We're going to go see if we can find him. He wasn't exactly where Sydney left him this morning, but I wasn't 100% sure where that was. But now we have a more accurate idea. Lily, age seven, you want to know if that female zebra was pregnant? Well, she did look a little bit round. Um, she didn't look enormously round, so she might be quite early on in her reproductive stage. But zebras always look a little bit round. It's, they're full of gas. They are what we call hind gut fermenters. So what that means, really, Lily, is they feed on lots of grass and it goes into their tummy and then it goes into something behind their tummy which is very similar to the appendix in humans except they use it and inside that appendix it all breaks down through bacteria and it basically gets very very gassy like when your daddy opens his beer and it makes that sort of sound that is exactly the sort of thing that's going on in there fermenting and just like with elephants and hippos and rhinos, zebras have got lots and lots of gas. And when they run, they often release it as they move, because their legs pumping on the ground often causes their stomach to release a lot of that gas. But I think she's going to be okay. She could possibly be pregnant, but not. it might still be early stages. Zebras don't have a season for breeding. They will breed throughout the year. Not like the wildebeest in Impala that want to have their babies out now. The zebra can basically whenever they want to. Well, look at her bum. She looks like it is very uncomfortable. But no doubt Tristan is having a marvellous afternoon with the most relaxed, most comfortable Tlalamba. Well, this is maximum chill mode at the moment. We had to reposition because she turned around and she's lay the other way and so it's made life a little bit tricky for Seb because it's very harsh light behind her at the moment. So it'll be pretty a little bit later if it goes quite kind of golden behind her but for now it's going to be a bit harsh unfortunately but she's found herself a nice spot. She's got all four paws kind of down and dangling and it looks very comfortable. You can actually see how much her paw is moving and how hot and kind of bothered she is from eating so much and then obviously the heat that is around as well. Jasmine, yes, um, there has been quite a few reported cases of um, leopard going after zebra. It does happen, um, particularly in places like the, the migration um, or in sort of East Africa where there are high numbers of zebra around. Um, there have been obviously cases in, in the Kruger Park area and I've seen um, quite a few leopards on in zebra kills here in the Sabi Sands, which is quite funny. In fact, I actually think I've seen more leopards on zebra kills than I've seen lions on zebra kills, which is quite odd for the Sabi Sands. But what happens is most of the time it's little young foals it's not actually adults and um, the only time I've seen a leopard feed on an adult zebra was that time that Mvula went after that wall and found that dead zebra and, and opened it up and it sprayed everywhere um, so that's the only time I've really seen an adult zebra being fed on and again he didn't actually kill that so in terms of when leopards do kill zebras it's normally small little foals that the the um, the adult leopards will grab and be able to subdue and, and feed on and most of the time the males can actually take them up into trees so I've seen it quite a few times like I say in the Kruger here in the Sabi Sands um, and quite a few videos of it in from East Africa where there's high populations of zebras so it does happen um, the thing is is that adult zebra are very powerful and so going after one of those is probably a very poor idea if you are a um, leopard in fact you know lions struggle a little bit um, themselves sometimes and so you know leopard being that much smaller needs to be a little bit more calculating about exactly what size animal they go after oh, but she's such a pretty cat isn't she and it's so nice to actually spend some time with her once again 
supporter. What about something huge like an elant? Would they attack those? Again, I, I mean, it's it depends on the size of the elant. So little baby elants, for sure, they'll go after them. I mean, we know even cheetah go after them. Fully grown adult male elant, no chance. Um, far too big for them. And that's their fully grown male elant is over a ton. Um, so that would just, uh, you know, it's 10 times the size of one of these big adult male leopards. So, no, it's it's no chance. But uh, young ones, for sure. Um, any baby animal is susceptible, even baby elephants, um, to leopard. And so, you know, they, they're opportunistic. And if they can see a chance and a gap and they can uh, overpower it, for sure they'll go after um, things like an inland. Now, there's somebody that's on the radio that wants to get an update, so we'll just let them know. Um, Dave is just Tandian Klalamba on Gari Main, east of uh, Chitwa new driveway, Klalamba's north of the fire break in Torchwood and Tandi south of the road in Chitwa. So we just had to give a quick um, update, um, but unfortunately it's a landowner that doesn't know what Klalamba means or Tandi, so that's going to have to explain to them, but we'll uh, do that later. Um, for now we'll carry on talking about this leopard. <laughs> Right, now we'll sit here while I explain this. Um, let's uh, send you back across to Steve. Well, good luck staying there, Tristy. Sounds like it's going to be a fun afternoon. We are just trying to have a little look around here because if Tingana is where he was left, it's just here on the side of the road, he was about two meters off. So there's two things that would have happened. He's either crossed to this way and gone down to the watering hole to drink. We didn't find any activity of that. I'm going to have another little look around here. But Sydney had him just off the road here. Or second option is that he has basically moved in a little bit underneath some bushes where it is nice and cool. So I'm just going to have another little, just a little drive in here because Tingana is quite a shy leopard on foot. So if I did walk in there, he's going to run away. And we don't want that. We don't want that. And then it's going to take us a long time to try to find him. But he's a very relaxed to the car. So it's quite nice and open here. Sens and I have got our eagle eyes on. Trying to see, see if you can spot him as well. Hello, Ravinda. Cattle can't wander into the reserve. We've got fences all the way around. Um, there are places um, in the north where fences get cut to let the cattle go in and, and eat, but they don't just wander in. If they do get in, it's invariably because someone has broken a fence to let them in. Um, it used to happen for you know, cattle and, and wildlife used to mix, but I think in the 60s, maybe even earlier than that, they put a veterinary fence all the way on the eastern, the western side to separate all the wildlife from any domestic animals. Uh, that's because of lots of diseases, uh, corridor disease, foot and mouth disease, and probably a number of others I can't quite recall right now. But if cattle did come into the reserve, well, easy, easy pickings for the lions. Indeed. Just having a little look under all of these trees. The ground is extremely hard. So impossible to see any tracks on the ground. The only thing I can suggest is looking in the shade for the ever elusive and camouflaged Duke of Druma. Senzo has got an amazing ability to spot these cats. We were singing our leopard song before, so I think we might, we might be lucky. Tingana, where are you boy? might have just moved slightly down here to the drainage line and that might be where we find him it's nice and open in places ow the biting flies are amongst us now and being very sensitive here folks and keeping to the little cleared areas any bushes I do drive over are just going to pop up underneath me. Amazing the recovery that is taking place in the wilderness at the moment. With all the vegetation, the greenery sprouting back again. 
There's a termite mound over here. That might be exactly where he is. We know he likes to hang out around termite mounds, don't we? Sydney suggested he might go off and hunt. It hasn't been the hottest of days. It's been mild, but nothing like what we've been experiencing the last few weeks. Just gonna give it one more little turn over here. A little bit easier to see the ground, these open areas with the termite mounds. Okay, well, while we see if we can find the Duke of Juma, whatever he might be up to, let's go over to his daughter. Indeed we do, Steve. We're fortunate in that we have a guaranteed leopard. It's always nice when things work out and go according to plan and you get things like a guaranteed cut early on in the drive. And I'm hoping Steve will find Tingana or even Hosanna because Hosanna's also been missing the last couple of days. I'm sure he is sausaging somewhere. Maybe him and dad are sausaging together. They've gone for a boys weekend um, to go and uh, kind of eat food and drink beers. Who knows? But um, maybe that's what they're up to at the moment and why we haven't seen Hosanna for the last couple of days. I, honestly, though, I do think Hosanna is on a kill somewhere. Um, when he disappears like this, then it's often the case is that he's feeding on something somewhere in the thickets. And because now, unlike in winter, where we were finding him regularly because of the lack of water and he'd have to go to Gallagher Pan or he'd have to go to Vuyatela Pan, now there's wallows all over the place. And so, you know, sometimes he can kill in blocks and he won't even have to move very far I can move 10 meters and find some water right there and never leave that area and don't come onto the road or anything like that and so we don't pick up any tracks and therefore very tricky for us to be able to work out exactly where um, he is and so hopefully he'll come out this afternoon Paula, I'm pretty sure that he is stuffing his belly as always. The one nice thing about Hosanna is that generally because of his relaxed nature is that if he does move outside of the confines of Juma, he's normally found quite quickly um, by the various different lodges that are around us and we know then straight away where he generally is. So if he goes off into, you know, Little Gari or into Arethusa or those kind of things, often we then know straight away and we can kind of figure out exactly what's going on with him. But you know, some of the other cats, not so much. So I'm sure he's somewhere on, on Juma, has just got himself a meal and maybe it's hoisted in a tree and we just can't see it from the roads. Uh, you never know, it's always tricky. Um, it's, it's, sometimes we miss carcasses even in winter and so in summer it just becomes that much harder, particularly if he's feeding off a lot of small things. So if he's targeting a lot of little piglets and um, baby impalas and those kind of things, sometimes he can be in a block for a week without coming out and it makes it quite tough. But I'd imagine now, you know, it's been two days um, since he's really kind of come out and, and moved around. And so I would imagine that whatever he's eating must be coming to an end now. And hopefully that's going to be the time now where he's going to start coming out and we're going to see him moving towards potentially Trias Dam or Twin Dams or Gallagher Pan or one of his favorite haunts that he likes to kind of spend time in. And he's seemingly also coming into Torchwood a lot more lately, which is interesting. Um, he's obviously been down in this Torchwood area. And so I just kind of have to scratch and get his, his tracks again. And I always say it with Hosanna is you, if you can stay on top of him every single drive and kind of figure out his tracks every drive, and, and try and locate him, he becomes easier to find um, when you know exactly where you're looking. The problem with him is when you lose touch with him for a day or two, he can pop up on the complete opposite side of where you think he might be. So, I mean, we know that he was last seen on quarantine and Pat had tracks of him going westwards um, towards kind of that drainage line of quarantine. But from there now, we don't know. And he could have gone north, south, east, west, anywhere. Um, and it becomes very tricky to be able to figure out exactly where he's gone. And I was saying to Jamie this afternoon, it's, he's definitely moving around a lot more and it's it's quite simple the reason why he's moving around is there's now more water and therefore less density of prey animals around the spots that he likes to hang out so in terms of Vuyatel Pan and, and Gallagher Pan there's no no need for huge amounts of impalas to be coming into those areas to come and drink and that allows time then for him to be able to actually go and do whatever he wants and go and kind of find food elsewhere. Right, so let's move those same because it's not a very good view that we've got at the moment. In fact, she's on a very bright sky and kind of silhouetted behind us. Oh, Wendy sounds like she's about to enter in a dragster race. Her exhaust has fallen off. So if anybody 
um, I don't know if Jamie went through it, but basically Wendy's exhaust came off the other day, as uh, these things do, apparently. First for me to see an exhaust completely fall off on a game drive vehicle, but that fell off, and so now we're in a kind of... You're going on a, I say, a drag race, and has this horrible humming sound, so I do apologize about it at the moment. It is going to be fixed um, on Sunday when Opa is back. Opa took a few extra days. He was supposed to be back yesterday, but he took a few extra days. And so now our exhaust is only going to have to wait a few days until it can actually be repaired correctly. And we can actually have a vehicle that doesn't sound like we're at a race course, um, which will be quite nice because the last thing that anybody likes is a vehicle that makes a lot of noise. Well, Specifically, I don't. Seb, I'm gonna stop here because there's a little bit more shade. There is a vehicle, which I do apologize, but it's blistering in the sun. And so no one wants to really kind of spend too much time being sunburnt. So we would rather stop there with the nice blue sky and puffy white clouds behind. But I think she's gonna come down fairly shortly. I don't doubt that she's gonna spend too much time up there. I'm hoping what's gonna happen though is that her coming down might sort of get Tundi to react as to what's going on and kind of try and bring her out a little bit and we'll get to see the two of them together what she might do though is she might try and see if she can find another branch that's just a little bit more shady than where she is now you can see the sun is kind of hitting her on her chest and her head um, and she's already hot and uncomfortable from the food that she's got and so if she lies in the sun it's just going to get more and more uncomfortable for her and that's why she'll try and avoid that and try and find herself a nice shady spot where she can lie and that might be a branch off to the kind of left of where she is or maybe even she'll come down onto the ground and just lie in the grass which I would imagine would be nice and cool because there's a bit of a breeze that is blowing today so in all likelihood you should kind of get um, lepers lying down the ground her mom is probably lying in some sort of thicket somewhere as only Tandy can do but amazing to see how much bigger she is I remember seeing a kind of pictures of her oh look at that isn't that beautiful Absolutely beautiful. Now she's going to come down. Seb, are you going to be able to get her from there? Oh, careful girl. She, well, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> she almost overbalanced there. That was close. Emma was saying in my ear, she's quite the athlete. She almost, her tips almost went over the top of her head. And if she almost fell out, can you imagine if she had fallen out? That it would have been quite something. But alas, she's come down quite fine and everything is okay. Right, let's just reposition here. Oh. Wendy, shush. I suppose there's nothing as bad as the Mara vehicles. The Mara vehicles are a lot louder than the Juma ones at the best of times, and so I think we'll be all right. She's gone into some nice shade now. I think she might have a little lie down in the shade itself, um, which is not ideal for us because she's gonna lie where the shade actually is, which means that we're not gonna be able to kind of see her all that nicely. Can you see her head there, Seb? So she's found herself a really nice little shady spot, but like I say, for us, it is not very pleasant at all. So there we go, that's much more comfortable than being up in a tree, being blitzed by the sun. Anyway, we'll sit with her. We're going to hope that Tandy comes out of the thickets sometime soon. In the meantime, though, let's send you back across to Steve. No luck so far, I'm afraid. We've searched up this, this area. It's very hard, it's very thick and very dense. And uh, we've just done a little little scoot in and out again and uh, there's been no joy so I'm gonna keep driving maybe have a look maybe he crossed and went on to the other side through the other block uh, where he came from I'll just keep checking if there's any tracks coming out I didn't see any tracks coming out on my way in here but you never know he might have just followed the drainage line here and then uh, well that should be very hard to find him in there unless he pops out onto the road but it is still quite warm at the moment so I don't think wherever he is, he's doing too much. So we not only have to find a very camouflaged leopard, we have to find one that's flat. I don't think he had a kill. Well, when Sydney found him, he certainly didn't have one, but there was nothing stopping him from hunting during the daytime. I'm just gonna do a little loop around this block and see if maybe he has indeed come out. Maybe he decided to hunt some of the impala. There haven't been any alarm calls there haven't been many animals around apart from that herd of, of wildebeest and zebra that moved through, which 
good indication that possibly he wasn't there. He might have reacted to a wildebeest. We saw him uh, last week. I think it was before I went away stalking a wildebeest and he definitely had his eye on the little youngsters. They were a little bit too wily for him. Kept out in the open, which is what they do best. But walking through this thicket can be quite sort of dangerous stuff for a wildebeest with a little baby. Because Tingana will have no qualms grabbing a little wildebeest. I'm not sure mum would be too happy about that. But I have seen male leopards kill uh, baby zebras before. I've never seen them physically catch a uh, wildebeest, but I did find the skin and the carcass of a wildebeest up a tree, a very, very tall tree in the Mara. And there's no other animal that could have gotten there other than a leopard, so it definitely does happen. We've got some tracks. Sensi has seen something. What do you got there, Sens? Whoopsie, gears. Sorry. Okay, that's his tracks coming this way. Oh, there we go. Well done, Sens. They're indeed Tingana's tracks. Let's see if I can position you to be able to see them nicely. There we go. That does look like him. I don't think we're going to get them in shot, though, are we? Just over here. There we go. Here's his track. I'm just in the way. I'm terribly sorry. There we go. There's his tracks heading in this direction. So he has moved. Let's see if we can find him. Very, very good. Okay, let's jump on board, everybody. He's uh, definitely after this morning because his tracks came from the south and they actually came through the block here and down on that side. So a very interesting movement he's on now. I don't know if he's scent marking or if he's trying to confront Ukumuri. Sydney was commenting this morning about how quiet Tingana has in fact been. Um, I don't know why. I remember last year when I started, I thought it was maybe just because he was a little bit weak that he wasn't calling in the beginning, in the early months when it was very green. Maybe because it's very dense, very thick. He wasn't calling. Maybe because it does, his voice just doesn't penetrate into the thickets. Okay, well, we're going to have to scratch around a little bit here. Those tracks now seem to have gone up. There we go. They're still there in this pathway. Heading straight along here, back towards Zoe's, where we basically initially found his tracks this morning. So he's doing one really big loop. Well, while we try and find Dad, Tristan is with Tlalamba. I think she might have climbed down from her tree. She might be on the move. So let's go catch up with them. Well, good luck, Steve. Hopefully one of those cats will show up between the boys. Um, there's quite a few options. But little Tlalamba, you can see, has moved a little bit, and she's just doing a bit of grooming. I think she wants to make her way slowly back towards the kill. She's in at least a nice little shady spot at the moment, which is, which is good for her, I suppose. I think she's just looking towards the kill just to see if maybe Mom is potentially um, sitting there and potentially having a bit of a feed and if she is then little Tlalamba will be a bit more kind of circumspect about moving and going anywhere now she's lying down again and there's a few cars that are moving so she's quite kind of twitchy if that's the right word for it she's alert as to what's going on and kind of is constantly sort of looking around trying to see and I think she can maybe spot her mother because the way that she's sitting now you can see look at how she's alert as to what's going on so i'm pretty sure mom is around and fairly close by at the moment kathy for the most part yes i've only ever once seen a leopard not land on its feet and that was when it was in a massive fight with another leopard and they fell off the tree um, and then you found that that leopard unfortunately um, landed on its tail actually so it still landed kind of feet ish i suppose but the tail kind of landed first and it actually broke its tail and the whole tail kinked completely so um it can happen that they fall out in a bad way but like i said it's only when they are either fighting or there's some sort of issue that they've got that they can't get out of a tree nicely but for the most part if it's a planned exit out of a tree then generally it's absolutely fine um, and everything is okay now i think i can see tundi from here 
Seb, I don't know. There's a car, unfortunately, that's probably in the way. But if we look from where we are, Seb, straight through towards kind of roughly where the car is. So um, straight through there to the left of the car. So, Kathy, you say she has such beautiful necklaces. Oh, your, the leaves are in the way for you, Seb, I'm afraid. But somewhere there, I saw movement in those thickets. Um, I think she's somewhere on the right of that, but we'll have to go and have a little scratch around. Um, we'll move in that direction just now, but behind there, there she is. There you can see her kind of feeding at the moment. So that's exactly where she is over there. We'll get closer just now. A little Columbus on her way there anyway, so we'll be able to kind of follow her as she goes with mom, and maybe we'll get another one of those tug-of-war games that tends to take place between these two little cats. I suppose little is not the right word. Tandy will probably get upset for me calling her little. She is a fierce mother and has done very well actually to be able to have as many cubs as she has and the success rate that she's had is quite something if you think about it. To have had as many litters as she's had and never once lost her entire litter which is pretty incredible if you ask me. I think it's amazing that she's managed to kind of do that. Uh, you know obviously her mom got a lot of um, exposure because of that. Now Gremlin you say spotted? Well yes we have spotted mom so that's good news and Columbus spotted mom too and so I'm pretty sure she's gonna head in that direction just now. I think it's mom. I mean obviously the way Columbus looking she's just making sure it's mom before she kind of decides to head off um, in that direction. Sometimes you know the boys can be around and then you'll find that um, little Clalum will be a lot more circumspect, but I would imagine it's mom. It looked like her from where we, from that kind of image. I, you know, I'm looking at a very small screen, so it's tricky to know for sure, but it did look like kind of Tundi's general body shape um, within that sort of setting. So we'll just try and see the vehicle is going to move a little bit now um, and try and kind of reposition, I think, mostly to probably allow um, everybody a view of Tandy, hopefully. And there we go. No, they are now going to block the view even more. Thank you for that. Very kind of you. <sighs> I say nothing. Anyway, we'll uh, just be patient. Eventually it will work out and we'll be able to get the view that we want. She almost looks a bit cheetah-like like that, doesn't she? She's still so slender and small. And when she sits like that with her neck kind of straight, she almost looks like she has a little cheetah head in comparison to... Um, to what you see from um, a normal leopard, you know, you see the likes of Hosanna and Tingana and they have these kind of big bulky backs to them, but little Tlalamba is still growing into her body and so is going to be a bit kind of smaller looking still. Ivy, you say looking at her from the back, you can see how young she is. Well, you can. You can see that her head's still developing. Her ears are still quite big in relation to the size of her body. Um, and that she does have a lot of bulking to do. She, you know, leopards are generally bulky creatures, but she does have a bit of work to do before she's going to be kind of at her mom's size, that's for sure. Still beautiful, though, either way. Right, well, I am going to move because I feel bad for being in the people's shots that is right there, even though it wasn't us that kind of got into the shots in the, in the beginning, but we're going to move anyway because otherwise those people are going to have photographs of a leopard with this giant car behind it, um, which is not very pleasant, really, for anyone. Plus, I don't want to stare at a car behind her either, if I'm honest. So we'll just reposition ourselves ever so slightly. Problem is we're going to have to be careful because there's a few fallen over trees here. Now oh, she moved. Now, I believe a lot of you are hoping for a lovely reunion shot. Well, I'm afraid, unfortunately, we're not going to get a shot of anything because there's too many cars if the, she does go towards... If Kalama goes towards Tandy, if Tandy comes this way, then we're absolutely fine. But the other way around is not going to work very well at all. In fact, we'd probably be blocked if they do, and that's exactly what's going to happen. So she's going to head towards where Tandy is now. Oh, she's pretty, though. She's lost that cub-like face, and I was saying, you know, I was looking at photos from this time last year, and she was a tiny little cub, 
um, in January. She's grown so much over the course of the year. And I mean, obviously it happens with leopards. It's not like she's grown more than any other leopard, but it's just amazing to kind of see the difference between that little cub um, that was so kind of innocent and small and fragile towards this little kind of sub-adult that's at least in some ways more leopard-like than anything else and is a bit, has the ability to look after herself, to find food and to probably in all ways kind of look care for her herself if needs be. But she's going to try and creep towards where mom is. You can see she's just kind of watching what's going on at the moment and trying to kind of see what's happening. I'm going to just reposition quickly, Seb, so that if they do come together that we can see them. So, hold on. Now, Emma, I would say that we can do that, but unfortunately there's too many cars and we're not going to get good views of what's going on. Um, the cars are parked in a way that it's going to be very tricky for us to actually see anything of what's happening. So, we're just going to try and kind of position in some sort of way that we can maybe just see where mom is and then hope that um, Tundi will come through but you can just see through the kind of gap there Seb I don't know if you'll be able to see it um, but there is that leopard that is feeding I just want to make 100% sure it is Tundi the way that Columba is approaching is a bit more kind of nervy than anything else we just need to see the top of her head um, to see if it is her you can't see her Seb so, if you have a look t um, to the left of that tree, just behind those leaves there. So, straight in there, the top of her head will pop up behind there. You can just see the movement every now and then. So, I'm just waiting to see because little Tlalambe is moving in that direction. Unfortunately, this is the best view we're going to get for now. Um, there is too many other kind of vehicles that are around, although... I suppose what we can do is we can go around Seb so let's go around rather and try and see if we can get a better view in the meantime though but while I try and reposition and try and figure it out let's send you back across to Steve who's still trying to find his leopard welcome back folks there's nothing much to report apart from the fact that his tracks have seemingly disappeared so we have a rehearsal after this so we're desperately trying to find him Otherwise, I'd stop and talk to you about some flowers. But uh, we would like to find the Duke. I don't think he's extremely far away. But uh, we're just going to go back to the last place we had his tracks and see whether he went left or right into the block. And then we'll decide where to continue from there. That will be marvelous to see Tandi and Tlalamba with their little reunion. I still haven't seen Tlalamba since I've been back from the Mara. I've seen Tandi very briefly when Pat was driving, but I haven't spent much time with her, and Tlalamba, well, I haven't seen her yet. It's very sad. She's holding out on me, I think. Holding out, so the track's heading along here. Got them in the road, walking nicely over here. It's nice when they stay to the road. When he goes into the thickets on the left here, well, that becomes a very tricky block indeed to follow. Okay, well, the good news is um, Tristan has got leopards, and not only one, he possibly might have two. It can be very tricky finding these leopards sometimes, Steve. It's um, tough to be able to kind of um, figure it out in the summer months. It's not easy at all. The tracks are hard to find, and as I was saying earlier, water is freely available to many of them, and you know they don't really move around like they do in the winter months, and the, the roads themselves are not as soft as they are in winter, and therefore you don't see the tracks as easy, easily as you would in the winter months. Now, we got into a position where we had a beautiful view of Tandi, and being Tandi, she just turned her bum, walked off straight into the thicket and is now hidden completely from us. We can't see a single thing. So that's where she was. She was perfectly out in the open and she went behind that log now so that we cannot see at all. And you can see little Clalumba is going to try and approach that carcass now, see if she can have a little feed. We might hear some growling from mom. Um, I can't see where she is now. I don't know where tundi has gone. And we're going to lose sight of Clalumba shortly too, unfortunately. We don't really have too many other options here, I'm afraid. There's not really kind of anywhere that we can position that's going to help us in this 
regard. So we're just going to have to have a thicket for now. And that's why you can see how hard it is to see leopards. I mean, that leopard is not even five meters from where we are. And yet still it's incredibly hard to be able to figure out where they are and actually even see them. So, you know, we'll have to try and reposition ourselves and try and see if we can get a better view. If we had actually stayed where we were, we would have been all right. But it seems as though it's going to be one of those afternoons where things are just going to move. So she looks like she's moving a little bit, so we're going to just try and sneak in. Ah, Laramur, isn't it magical how they disappear? Ah, Laramur, I'm not sure magical is the way that I would describe this, if I'm honest with you. Um, when they disappear like this, it can be incredibly frustrating from a kind of trying to find them point of view it's it's incredible camouflage i'll give them that but in terms of magical mm, not quite sure i would use that description if i'm honest with you i i find uh, the fact that they disappear sometimes like this incredibly frustrating but it's part of the charm of a leopard is that it is difficult to be able to find them and to see them and to be able to kind of figure out where they are and you can see i mean this leopard is so close and if that she had to lie down dead flat and not move you would drive right past that you wouldn't even spot her and um, it's only because her tail is moving and we have a camera kind of zoomed in on her that you can actually see it but otherwise it's incredibly difficult to be able to spot these cats in foliage and thickets like this and i mean this is not even five meters off one of the biggest roads that there is in this reserve so you know tricky you have to kind of be patient and... Zephyr you say what a silly girl well indeed she can be a little bit silly sometimes she's another story this cat um, she <laughs> does all kinds of funny things um, constantly and so you know she's a joy to actually watch that's for sure but Tandy obviously doesn't want to be put on camera today she's not interested in us filming her at all because every time we've tried to put on camera she's just disappeared behind either a car or a thicket or something um, and is not in any mood to be able to kind of show herself to us which is a bit of a shame and it's always nice when we get to see and spend time with her I, I wonder if any of the boys will find this carcass if i mean we know tingana was on juma so the chances of that is pretty probably pretty low um but uh, you know quarantine this is an area that he does sometimes move around in so he could potentially kind of move past this section Now, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of vehicles that want to come here. So now that they've crossed onto Chitwe, we're going to have to, in all likelihood, leave and allow for others to come this way. Good, little Klalamba is still eating and is still kind of finishing off. We'll just try and figure out what's going on with the lineup. And if there's lots of people coming, we'll probably move out. In the meantime, though, back to Steve, who knows all about how difficult it can be to spot a leopard in this long grass and then they either go left or right it's very hard to say but have a look what we got to contend with if he is in there well good luck trying to find him Sydney I think was lucky this morning that he just happened to materialize on the side of the road this time of year is very hard to find these cats tracking is difficult unless they walk in the road which they don't always do and as soon as they go off the road the grass covers the tracks and of course the trees also cover them visibly just having a little listen for any alarm calls i thought i heard a franklin it was just a natal franklin giving a little bit of a territorial call what a beautiful afternoon Okay, well, we're going to give it one more little try around the corner here, see if maybe if he popped out on this other road up ahead. And if he doesn't pop out, well, then we'll make another plan. Hello, Zamzin. Well, that's a very, very good question. Tingana's history, he's, we believe it is, he's in his 13th year, and as far as I'm aware, he's been sort of the dominant resident male here for about four years, if I'm not mistaken. He is the father of uh, Tamba, who is Tandi's son. He is the father of Hosanna, 
who was Karula's son. Uh, Karula is also the mother of uh, Tandi. So there's a really interesting sort of mixture there. And um, so the dynamics are very interesting. And he, we thought he was going to be leaving this year. We thought maybe the interloper Hukumuri was going to move in and oust him from his position. And earlier last year, I think in about April, March, April, May time, he wasn't looking in great condition at all. He wasn't really calling in the early stages. As it got to April, I think he started calling again. Uh, Hukumuri materialized on the scene in February, just in time for our TV show. And well, since Tingana's come back into form, he has really been reigning over his dukedom very, very well. I really don't know where he came from, though. Um, I'm not 100% sure about that. I'm sure some of the viewers out there will know where Tingana comes from. But I mean, it's quite a sort of eight or nine years of age when he arrived here to only then be a dominant male. I mean, normally male leopards can sort of become territorial or dominant around the age of sort of four and a half, five. So where he was before that was really hard for me to say. No doubt Tristan knows very well. He's been in the Sabi Sands for a long time. Intimate knowledge of all these leopards. All I know is Tingana was the first leopard I saw uh, when I got here on my interview drive. Hosanna then nonchalantly came up and joined him, drinking a little watering hole on Chitwa. Excuse me, driving so erratically, folks. I'm just checking this road to see if he's popped out anywhere. And then I think also on when I started full-time here, he was the first leopard I spotted as well after seeing the Styx lions. Oh, no, I lie. I saw Tandi and Tlalamba before I saw Tingana, but then I saw him shortly afterwards. But he really does have his hold over Juma, and uh, he's been doing very, very well. Everyone's watching very closely, and last year, for months, the topic of discussion was when will Kukuri take over? Interesting.
unfortunately, the gremlins seem to be in a, I don't know, having an absolute party this afternoon and have swallowed James and are attempting to try and swallow us, but our tech team is valiantly flighting back. Now, we lost a view of Columba because she kind of went behind us and Tanya's in the thicket at the moment, so I'll go back a little bit so we can see little Columba. I'm just trying to see if Tanya's going to come out. Doesn't look like it. Looks like she's going to be all right where she is and just lie off in the thickets as she does. Although maybe she's coming out. Let's have a look. Can you see? Okay, little Columba is lying down on the road. And I think Tandy's walking off the road on the other side. Hello, little Columba. We're gonna go look at your mom because we've seen a lot of you this morning, this afternoon, should I say. So I just wanna go and spend some time with mom if we can, because as much as the little one is beautiful, I like spending time with Tandy. We all know that she's my favorite of the females, and so any time I can get to spend with her is a good time, that's for sure. And she's kind of marching away, unfortunately, in a direction that we might lose signal. So that's also why I want to just spend a bit of time with her while I can. So there she is. Hello, my girl. Are you being grumpy? Are you already growling from here? You can't be growling unless your little one is coming. No, little one is sitting on the road. Hello, girl. What's wrong? She's kind of looking at the carcass itself. I think she's just trying to find a spot to rest. Oh, so nice to see her. Look how full her belly is, though. She is full, 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 full. Shame. Are you hot as well? She's so pretty, isn't she? I'm not impressed, though, that she's now spending more time away um, from Juma. It's time for her to now mobilize herself back that way because I thoroughly enjoyed last year in the beginning when she was there all the time and sort of in December and that period. It made it very pleasant to be able to spend time with her almost every day and now it's become a lot harder um, to spend time with her. And so, um, Carla, you agree she is a beautiful girl and that's why I like when she spends a lot more time with us. But I think she's going to go into a thicket and go and lie down and that seems to be where she's kind of heading. You can see how she's just disappearing in that shade. And it's just a kind of bum in her tail at the moment. But we'll just, I just wanna see where she settles before I reposition too much. Um, I'm obviously hesitant because I know that she'll move probably when I start the car. If she starts to lie down there, then it will be okay. But it looks like both of them have moved off into Torchwood, which is good news for us. Right, we're gonna reposition. She is lying down. While we do that though, let's send you back across to Steve and see how his afternoon is going. Well, Tristan, hopefully you can keep up with Tundi and she doesn't give you the slip. We haven't had any luck this side with Tingana. Well, if he wants to sleep in there, he probably can just do so. We, um, I know that there's a little pan system in the middle of that drainage there. Possible that he might be there. We're gonna go around anyway and see uh, Gallego quickly see if maybe Osana's popped out somewhere maybe Tingan has given us a slip through the block here we haven't managed to see the tracks we all know that water is the currency of life and while animals will always frequent around it and maybe maybe we'll be lucky with the last minute leopard That'd be marvelous definitely far nicer temperatures than we had last week last week was uncomfortably uncomfortable, if that makes any sense. Well, Kelsix, I have not seen Shadulu in so many months, but apparently she has been reported with cubs in the West. So um, that would be wonderful if she decided to just pop over our boundary and come and introduce her little cubs because she is a magnificent leopard. I really have enjoyed time with her. And well, when she's relaxed, those cubs will relax really quickly. And so when you hear cubs, it's obviously plural. I don't know if it's two or three or four. Two is more likely. One is generally the case with an older leopard and Shadulu is quite young. So we, we assume it's probably her first litter. I believe that was the discussion, definitely her first litter. Sometimes I think their litters might be quite small when it's the first one as well. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly, but Definitely in the plural, I've been told, but I haven't seen that information firsthand. 
but Shadulu would be a really nice asset to spend some time on here. And that Lalamba and Tandi are spending most of their time in the eastern tortured. There's this huge void on our western side for a leopard. Jennifer, what more can we say? We did a Twitter poll not long ago about cubbies being awesome. And we know that leopard cubs won that poll hands down. Mrs. Lapwing, you can confirm that it's two cubs. Well, thank you very much for that. Two cubs. I think that would just be so cute, wouldn't it? Two little youngsters. And we wonder if it was from the mating of Hukumuri. Could be. So it could be an interesting little genetic sort of breakdown there. Of Because Shadulu is quite a big female, in my opinion. Her track is big, she's a big female, and Hukumuri is just a very strong, powerfully built leopard with her, that formidable gaze and stare. So a mixture between those two would really, really be a nice dynamic for the area. So some of you are wondering whether she avoids the area because of Tadi, and we know that they had a bit of a boxing match on uh, Aubrey's Road, which is just west of where I am now. Here we are on Gallego. We are here now. And uh, this is where we've been checking for Tingana. Right over here. And this is where Tandi and Shadulu months ago had a really big boxing match. And we didn't see it. I didn't see it. I believe one of the landowners did. And now we think that Shadulu's spending a lot of time here. And this is where Tandi's moved to. So Tandi's not really even coming too far west. So there's this huge void on our western side that we really would like to have Shadulu moving into. She, but she definitely scouted it out. I mean, we spent some time with her. Sens and I even followed her across the entire property one morning. And we figured she was actually maybe not hunting, but maybe looking for a suitable place to den. <laughs> Hukuzulus, Carla. What a nice name. Hukuzulus would indeed be the name if you combined the two. But uh, one thing that is quite common with leopard females is that they'll often try and breed quite close to where they were born because they're familiar with the area. We've seen how Tandi's really taken on um, Karula's sort of territory and her areas of movement. And she hasn't strayed very far with her cubs over the years. I obviously haven't been here for all that long, but um, all the information I'll be given, she spent a lot of time in very similar areas that she was as a cub. And that kind of makes sense. And generally with leopards, uh, females will sort of carve out what was that noise will carve out a small territory within their mom's sort of territory and uh, i think her mom came from the west as well so i think she was just pushing her boundaries a little bit into where tandy frequents but tandy's surely moved east i haven't seen her this far in some time we've had her right here before but anyway talking about the queen she is with tristan in the shade all the way over there Well, she has moved quite a lot far east, and um, the, the reason she's moved east is quite simple. It's that Hukumuri pressure from the west is just too much for her to take a risk, and that's why she's brought Klalamba all the way to the east like this, and she's hanging around in this general kind of vicinity. It's a little kind of gap that she's formed along the Mulawanini towards the Mulwati, and so you can kind of patrol that area, and she at least then can dominate that kind of section, and when she needs to, once she comes into heat again, she'll maybe then potentially push back to the west again. But for now, it's much safer for her to have Klalamba this side of the world and to make sure that Klalamba stays nice and safe in this particular part of the area. And with Shadulu and Hukumuri on that side, that's what does it. Now, the problem is, is that Shadulu, I'm very surprised where Shadulu actually ended up having her cubs. So for those of you who don't really kind of know the layout of the land, Shadulu, a lot, for a large portion of the time, was hanging around mostly on sort of Arethusa into Simambili, but on the far eastern side of Simambili, and then she'd come into Juma all the way to kind of Trias Dam, Quarantine. It's kind of roughly where we used to see her. And that was the sort of core of her territory would have been sort of Triple M and just inside of Arethusa. But where she's given birth is at Simamili Dam. Now, Simamili Dam is very far from where. Um where we are on Juma. Um, so she's moved a long way past where I thought that she would. Um, I thought she would have done somewhere in the drainage line like Shadow used to do off parallel on Arethusa. That was where I thought she would be. 
Um, but seems as though she would tend far, far to the west. And that's probably because of Hukumuri's movements these days is that he pushes all the way towards that Elephant Plains, past Simamili, those kind of areas. Now, what's also interesting about it is that from Simamili Camp to Simamili Dam is probably, I would say, driving time about 10 minutes if you drive on the fire break directly to it. Um, and Tiani is currently denning inside um, Simamili Camp as well. So they are about 10 minutes apart, those two female leopards, both of them with cubs. Tiani, I haven't got a confirmation on how many cubs she's got. Shadulu's obviously definitely got two lots of photos of, from her and videos and all kinds of other things lately that have been of her little cubs and they look super chilled on the road and kind of walking around, which is really good news. Um, so I'm, I'm very surprised by that kind of proximity to one another um, and the other interesting thing is that there's this unknown male leopard that is skittish that is being seen in those areas and what does that mean to both of those females did they both mate with him um, and are those actually his offspring rather than um, Hukumuri's is always the kind of interesting part about it so there's going to be a little bit of a thing that's going to play out there when leopards have cubs that close together and um, there generally is going to be a bump into one another at some point because if Tiani pushes to the east slightly which she often used to go to Simamili Dam she's going to come across um, Shadulu there and they might have a little bit of a, a clash now some of the viewers are asking some of you are asking whether or not we've uh, seen Tiani live Yes, we have. We have seen Tiani live, as far as I know. Or did we see Salahesh that time? I know the two of them had a kill on Arathusa airstrip, and I can't remember which of the two we saw, whether it was Tiani or Salahesh. I think it was Salahesh, actually. I think Tiani disappeared just before we got there. But um, eh, I, I, then I don't, I'm not sure. I know that I did go to a sighting where both were present, and we only saw the one, though. The one, other one just kind of disappeared, and we couldn't see them. So I'm not 100% sure if it was Tiani or Salahesh. I think it was Salahesh now that I actually think about it. Um, and I know Brent and Jamie, I think, have both had Salahesh once before, so maybe not, actually. I wish we did see her. She is the most exquisite leopard. She's got these beautiful, beautiful blue eyes um, on her, and she's bulky and big and she looks she looks she reminds me a lot of anderson funny enough uh, just a prettier version of anderson i'll try to find a picture of her so linda i think this will be tundi's last litter when she has her next one um i don't know um i, I would imagine so you know she's she's going to be old if she raises that litter to success um if, and she gets that litter to um it's adult age you know she's going to be pushing by then she'll be pushing sort of 14 15 years old depending on the on the time that she loses that or lets that cub go and, and pushes off um, and then that age is quite old uh, to have a cub i don't think she would have cubs after that so potentially after Tlalumba would be her last one but for those of you who have never seen tiani hold on sorry Seb, let me just clean the screen first before you come to me you can start coming though because we do have a picture of her but there we go that's what she looks like she's a beautiful beautiful female she's got quite a bulky face black dark nose and then these beautiful bluish colored eyes and she spends a lot of her time in the far west and who knows what will happen you know and these leopards move around quite a bit maybe one day we'll get to see her but she's absolutely exquisite and a big big female in fact she was as bigger than Salahesh when she was only a, just over a year old and you look at Kalamba and she's over a year old now and she's kind of much much smaller than what Tandi is and I remember watching little uh, Tiani kill a Daika at four and a half months old which is I mean obviously Salehesh caught it and brought it back to her, but she actually was the one that was able to kill it and kind of subdue it, which is absolutely insane. So she's got her bit of her dad's genes in her in the form of Anderson and those big kind of um, strong sort of genetic Salehesh was also a, a decent sized female. So she should be an interesting leopard to watch in the future. And her and Shadulu are going to have a few altercations, I would imagine, on those boundaries like Shadow and Salehesh sometimes used to have as well. But you can see Tani is not interested in facing us today. She's just facing straight into a bush. Little Kalamba left the road. I don't know. She went in this direction too, but we haven't seen her kind of come back in this direction. And so I'm not sure where she's headed off to. She's somewhere around here, but at least we got to see both of them. Um, it's such a treat when we get to spend time with both of these individuals so i thoroughly enjoyed my afternoon with the two of them and i hope that you guys did too i like i say i mean it's always nice when we do spend time with them but uh, unfortunately it's that time of the day remember we are doing a rehearsal this evening which means we finish earlier today um and so we are going to say goodbye as we start to prep for the rehearsal that's going to be starting in half an hour's time 
But it's been an absolute pleasure having you with us. I hope that you enjoyed Daryl and a brief view of the Mara. Hopefully we'll recover. James will let you know tomorrow morning if he's still alive. Um, otherwise, it's going to be an uncomfortable night. But from all of us, it's been an absolute pleasure. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning on our Sunrise Safari.